Welcome, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the Way's uh, first prayer program. Okay, so it's the first uh, prayer program. And, uh, yeah, we're here to pray. This is, this is amazing. You know, I want to encourage you to pray. Prayer is um, 
communication with God. And there's no one that you have a good relationship with that you call your friend, your padi, your, your homeboy that you don't talk to. And today we're going to speak with the Father. You know, before we, uh, we're going to be in the book of Luke, chapter 11, for a little bit. Uh, I just want to give a little, I just want to touch on faith, you know, in prayer. Just touch a little bit on faith. Because if you don't have faith when you pray, you're pretty much, it, it's, it, it, you could be doing more damage, actually, than, than good. So we're going to be in Luke 11. Well, okay, we can start from chapter 1, just to make it kind of quick. Um, Luke 11. Sorry, not chapter 1, verse 1. Luke 11, verse 1. And it came to pass that as he, Jesus, was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, when he stopped praying, when Christ, when his prayer came to an end, one of his disciples, one of them said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples to pray. This John is John the Baptist. So this lets us know that John the Baptist would teach First of all, he had disciples, and John the Baptist would teach his disciples how to pray, and he taught them how to pray. And so there's, and one of whoever this disciple is says, hey, teach us how to pray too, the same way that, that John taught his disciples. We're your disciples, teach us. Um, okay, I'll read that. I'm not, well, not going to break this down, but we'll just read it. Verse 2, and he said unto them, when ye pray, say, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and as in heaven, so in earth, give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, verse five. And he said unto them, now here's what we're going to break down. OK, now listen to this, this, uh, this story, this parable. Verse five. And he said unto them, which of you? disciples, shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, friend, lend me three loaves. Let me borrow three loaves of bread. Why? Verse six, because a friend of mine is on his journey and he's come to me. He stopped by my house. He's spending the night and I have nothing to set before him. I don't have food to serve. I don't have something to serve him. And look at verse 7, and, f and he from within, the friend that, you know, the guy went to go meet and knock on his door, shall answer and say, trouble me not, don't bother me right now. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. And verse 8, here's the lesson. Jesus said, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, so even if he doesn't get up, to give him anything because he's his friend, because of his importunity, because of his persistence, because of his uh, diligence, fervency, that friend will rise up from that bed he was sleeping in or laying in and give that friend at the door as many as he needeth. Verse 9, then Jesus says, after you listen to that story, here's what I tell you. I say unto you, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. And this is some, you know, this is some powerful, this is a powerful statement right here, verse 10. You know, any anytime the Lord of Lords says every, all, nothing, these absolute statements, if anyone is exaggerating, it's not him. Verse 10, for everyone that asketh receiveth, and he, anyone that seeketh, Find it, and to him, anyone that knocks, it shall be open. If if a son ask if, if a son shall ask for bread of any of you that is a father, will you give him a stone instead of bread? Or if he ask for fish, will you give him uh, uh, a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he if he ask for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Okay, we'll stop there. Okay, we want, I just want to break down this, uh, this uh, passage a little bit, and um, we'll pray, you know. The, 
This is one thing about faith, okay? What time did the friend come to the house? Midnight. Inconvenient. Okay? Now, why did he go to that friend? Why would you go to a certain friend for something? Because you know he or she can do it or has or is able. Okay? Now, remember, picture you and the father. Okay? Any time, whether inconvenient for you is nothing is inconvenient for the Lord, for the, for the Father. Inconvenient for you doesn't matter. You can go at any time. You know he's able. You know he's able. He said, a friend of mine is on his journey and he's come to me. This is a selfless person, or at least a caring person. He wants to feed the guest. I have nothing to set before him. He said, don't trouble me now. The door is shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. And this is what Jesus says. Even though he may not rise because, he's of his, uh, because he is his friend, because of his importunity. You know, importunity is very important. Let me just say persistence, diligence is very important. You know, giving up is common in the Christian faith. Giving up, just saying, ah, you know, I, I tried, I prayed, you know, ah. Uh, and that, that's it. You know, people try harder for other exams in the world than when it comes to prayer. I know personally in my family, two people, close, one person. What's the, what's the medical exam? The doctor? M MCAT? No, it's not that one. <laughs> MCAT, MCAT, you know, I think. Or some kind of board, four or five times. My, my, someone else in my family. Uh, the, uh, the board exam for to become a lawyer, I think seven times. That stuff is not easy. Every time you fail, you just think. But it continued, and she continued. Persistence, right? Not giving up. Sometimes uh, praying is like medicine. If you have a pain, you don't take, and you take the medicine, painkiller, the pain doesn't go away, you take more. Sometimes you have to pray again. You got to pray some more, okay? And then Christ says, anyone, after he gives this parable or this, uh, this story, he says, anyone that asks, it shall be given. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, it shall be opened unto you. Someone pointed this out. <laughs> it's kind of cute. Uh, the first letter of ask is A. The first letter of seek is S. The first letter of knock is K. So the most important thing for you to do is A-S-K, is to ask, to speak. He said, everyone that asks, receive. Everyone. There's no one. Now, you may say, oh, I asked. But you ask like this. Because the word of God is not a liar. The word of God is, not, is, is true. He's not going to lie. If you ask like this, guess what? You're going to receive. Let's jump real quick. And then we're going to pray. Let's jump to Colossians 1. Colossians 1. Colossians 1. You know, one thing that really helps when it comes to prayer is just having the right understanding. Having the right understanding because prayer is like, is like, is like a weapon. It's like a gun. And you have a target you're supposed to hit. If, you're not, if you don't have the right understanding, you're just going to shoot different places, and you'll be like, why isn't anything happening? But when you have the right understanding, you know what to shoot, and you shoot the right way. You hit the target, and you see change. Uh, ver uh, Colossians 1, right? Now, I'm not going to go through any, everything, but... Verse 9. This is mid-sentence, but try to follow me. Or mid-thought. For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. Paul is talking about the people in Colossae, the brethren over there. And desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Of whose will? Of God's will. He's talking to brothers and sisters. So this means that you can be a brother and sister and not know the will of God. Knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He's talking to the church, y'all. This means you can be in the body just because you're in Christ, you may know some, uh, some songs or some hymns or some scripture. He's praying this about spirit-filled people. Okay? 
that you might be desire that you that you might be filled with all knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You know what? Let's let's actually make that a prayer. Let's make that a prayer. In every area of my life, fill me with the knowledge of your will in every area of my life. When it comes to what I should do, where I should go, fill me with the knowledge of your will. Open my eyes. Give me understanding. Guide my footsteps in the name of Jesus. Fill me with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom. Give me, give me wisdom from above, not the earthly wisdom. Give me wisdom from above. Help me make the right choices. Help me do the right things. Let me not be a victim of confusion. You're not the author of confusion. Help me see clearly. Fill me with understanding. Help me understand your word every time I open it. Help me be able to discern when it comes to listening to your word, listening to, to preachers, listening to speakers. Help me discern, Father. Understanding, Father, give me understanding. Open my eyes. Fill me with wisdom. You know, anytime you pray this prayer, you know you're praying the will of God. And you don't have to, you don't have to hope that he's going to answer. He will answer. This is his will more than it's your will. And when your will lines up with his will, of course he comes through. All you have to do is receive it by faith. When we're praying this, the Lord is doing it. He's working this out in us. He wants us to be filled. We don't have to fight him. This is his will for your life. Fill me with the knowledge. Fill me with all knowledge, godly knowledge, Father, godly wisdom. Open my eyes. Give me spiritual understanding. According to your word, give me spiritual understanding. The next verse says, that ye might walk worthy unto all, pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. He's talking to believers. We can increase in the knowledge of our Father. Let that be our next prayer. Father, help me increase in the knowledge of you. Help me get to know you. Help me draw closer to you. Help me draw closer to you day by day. Increase my appetite for you. Increase my appetite for you. Help me yearn for you more and more. Increase my appetite for your presence. Increase my appetite for understanding. Increase my appetite for your word. Pour into me, Father. Pour into me. Open my eyes. Fill me with, fill me with the knowledge. Fill me with the knowledge I need for, to make the right choices in life, to, take the, to make the right decisions. Fill me. Open my eyes. Help me see clearly. I come against distractions. I come against every contrary force. I come against every contrary power. You have no hold over me. You have no place in this vessel. This body is a temple of the living God. eyes. Father, help me see clearly. Help me understand your word. Help me pray accurately. It says, strengthen with all might. Strengthen me, Father. Strengthen me with your glorious power. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. Let me not be weary. The word says, don't be weary in well-doing, for in due time you shall reap. In due time you shall reap reward. Let me not be weary, Father. Give me, continue to give me strength. Help me, help me press on. Help me continue to press on. Let's make a decree, I will not give up. I will not be discouraged. I will encourage myself in the Lord. I will encourage myself in the Lord. I will not give up. I will not throw in the towel. I will continue to press on and get stronger and stronger by the grace of God, going from glory to glory in His, in His majesty. You know, verse 12 says, giving thanks to the Father who's made us partakers. He's made us worthy, you know. We have to understand this, you know, when it comes to God, the perception of Him is so key. That way we see Him is so key. You know, I grew up under, uh, given, you know, I grew up hearing, even in the church, I grew up hearing, oh, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, which is true. I'm not worthy, but God says I'm worth it. And he's made me worthy. Look at this, verse, verse, verse uh, uh, 12. 
giving thanks to the Father that has made us meet. You know what meet means? It made us worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You know, the condemning words that want to make you feel guilty and dirty and, and like a filthy rag, even using scripture. We need to ignore those. We need to rightly divide the word. We're a filthy rag outside of Christ, but in Christ we're the righteousness of God. We're a peer. We're not even a rag. We're pe we're, we are in Christ. There's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. Let's say, thank you for making me worthy, Father. Thank you for making me worthy to be a partaker of the inheritance in life. Thank you. No more shame. No more guilt. Thank you for making me worthy. Thank you. I am clean, I am pure by the blood of the Lamb. My past stains have no hold on me. My life is hid in Christ Jesus. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. I'm a new creature. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Grace is sufficient. Death brought me life. Thank you for making me worthy. Thank you for making me worthy. Thank you for making me clean. Thank you for redeeming me. Thank you for redeeming me. No past sin has any hold on you. No past failure has any hold on you. Looking forward. He that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy. Don't look back at your failure. If you've repented, not only has God forgotten it, but you should forget it too. Thank you, Father, for making me worthy. Thank you for uplifting me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the name of Jesus. I want to point out something in Ephesians. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 says that the Lord is, lets us know that the Lord has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's so beautiful. As in like the Lord held nothing back when he, when he saved us. He didn't say, I'm going to hold some back. You know, he, he said, I'm giving you all of me. You give me all of you, I'll give you all of me. It's, he says he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in verse 3. You see now, the reason that people in this race of Christianity are at different levels is just because of revelation. It's just, of, it's just of the unveiling or the, 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 the realization of what they have. That's all it is. It's all it is. Everyone in here has been given the Spirit of God. As long as, they've been, as long as you've surrendered your life to Christ, you've been given the Spirit of God. And now all you have to do is dig in to the Father. You have to just spend time with Him so that you can, He can unveil Himself to you more and more. It's the same as any relationship. When you get married, I do, I do, I will, I will. And as you grow, more is unveiled to you about that person. You don't know everything. Of course, they're all yours, but you grow in understanding. And the same thing with the Father. As time goes on, as your, as, as your hunger increases, your walk will change, you know? I heard a man say that <laughs> it's which is true. You are as close as you want to be to God. You are as spiritual as you want to be. You are as anointed as you want to be. You, you are as close to him as you want to be. There's nothing holding you back. You're not waiting for him. He's waiting for you. Oh, beautiful. This is Paul praying for the, for the, for the believers again. I'm going to read from verse 15 and kind of go through. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love to unto all the saints, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, remember, look, look here, this is the prayer he's making for, for believers, for believers with the Spirit of God, that the, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may what? He may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So this means you can be lacking this, even though you're in the body. He says that, you, that he may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him. 
the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or open that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. You may not know what the hope of his calling is and what the riches of the glory of, in, of the inheritance in the saints. I know this is a lot, but the point is, the word says if you draw close to God, he's going to draw close to you. And every time you do that, you can, you can, you, anytime you draw close to God, he's drawing close to you. There's no reason for you to doubt that. Anytime you draw close to him, and the physical may not, the, the physical may not testify to it, but we don't live by, we don't walk by sight. We don't walk by the physical, we walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Father, open my eyes. Help me see clearly. Help me see clearly as I, as I continue to grow older. Help me see clearly. Open my eyes. Help me see clearly, Father. You know, the Word of God lets us know that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. What does that mean? If you say you believe something and your life doesn't change, you don't really believe it. If you say you believe something and you, and you, don't, you don't act on that belief, you don't really believe that thing. Fear, faith and fear. Some people say they're opposites. Well, not really but they are against each other. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Fear is the substance of things you don't hope for. Fear is a form of faith. Because when you have faith, you do certain things. I believe this, I'm gonna do this. Oh, by, oh, in Jesus' name, I'm gonna do this. Fear is the same thing. I believe this, so I'm not gonna do this. I believe this, so I will do this. Oh, I don't want that to, oh, oh. It's a form of faith. So if faith without works is dead, then fear without works is dead. If you have fear and you refuse to feed that fear, that fear will die. If you have a fear and you refuse to live life based on that fear and say, oh, I, I'm afraid of this, so therefore I'm going to do this. If you decide, oh, the devil wants me to be afraid. No, I'm not going to do that because that will be a reaction to that. And I'm not living by fear. I'm living by faith. So when we live by faith, our life follows based on what we do. And that's the prayer we want to pray. Father, help me walk by faith, not by fear. I, I reject fear. I reject every form of fear. I reject every form of failure. Fear of failure, fear of losing, fear of dying, fear of not succeeding. I, oh, fear. Hmm. Fear is, is big. Fear is big. We want to reject fear. Fear is a spirit and it has ears. I reject fear. I reject fear. I reject fear. It can be in any in many ways. It could be failure to get this accomplished. It could be failure to have this done. It could be failure to get to this point. I reject fear. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. I'm free from fear. I reject fear. Get thee behind me, fear. You have, no, you have no place in me. You have no place in me. I will not fear the future. I will not fear. The Lord is with me. Because he lives, I will face tomorrow. Because he lives, I will face tomorrow. Father, help me live by faith. The just shall live by faith.
you live by faith, you can either say you can either stop the storm or make it through the storm. Faith, sometimes when you live by faith, you speak to the storm and the storm stops. Sometimes when you live by faith, you can make it through the storm without, without being affected. But whatever it is, we should live by faith. The storm doesn't dictate your life. You know, what has happened to you is not you. Don't label yourself by what has happened to you or what has not happened to you. That's not you. That's not your name. In the book of James, it says that the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man avails much. That means if you are a child of God, that means you're righteous because in, in Christ we're the righteousness of God. So if you're a child of God and you pray fervently, diligently, consistently, it does a lot. Let's pray, Father, help me, help me live free from negative influence, negative opinions. Help me live free. Help me live free. Help me live free. We also want to say, Father, help me live free from... <laughs> from compliments you know compliments they may sound good but they can change you you know in the book of John I believe it was uh, chapter 18 or, 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 or 19 Jesus Christ said I did not receive the praise of people what does that mean did people praise him yes they did they called him Hosanna he said I did not receive it as in when they when I heard it okay I acknowledge but I didn't take that to heart and say yes and that's how we should be with negative and positive. Yes, we can take a compliment and say thank you and all that. Christ said, I did not receive the praise of men. Did men praise him? Yes, they did. But he didn't receive it. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't take comfort in that. Oh, people like me. People, people, people smile at me. People like me. People favor me. He didn't take comfort in that. His security was in the Father. Help me live secure in you, Father. Help me live secure in you. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Please, let's clap our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> okay, so I just want to say thank you to the leadership of the house for allowing me. It's a huge privilege to share the word of God. I've attended, and I know that this, this is a house of God's word. So yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's flattering that... You know, I can share the little that I, that I know. Praise God. All right, let's go straight to God's word. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for the entrance of your word gives light. Thank you because Jesus is glorified, will be edified. We will see him and then see us as he sees us in him. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. Amen. All right, it's pretty quiet. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. All right, so what I want to do basically, very simple, is to give us, maybe, let me call it, um, permit me to use the word direction as regards faith. Direction. And then, also um, show us the, the importance, at least that's what me and you know, Brother Gwinger said this would be about. Talk about the importance of prayer and then we'll, we'll also try to see the direction towards faith, what it means. Praise God. Amen. All right, I think um, we all know this, that prayer is very important. The Bible says the effectual and fervent prayer. Amplified says, Heartfelt prayer of a righteous man availed much or makes tremendous power available. And so um, prayer is one of the fundamentals of our faith. One person was telling me one time, he said, we don't need to pray so much. Jesus has done it all. So I said, very simple. I think you're correct. Just make sure that when you get home, you cancel all the action words that you have in the New Testament. Cancel everything. Because that means he has finished everything now, so there's no action. Anywhere you see a verb, or a verb, I mean, just cancel it. And he started laughing, I said, so you see, when the Bible says he has finished, or when the Bible says it is finished, it means the end of dead works has finished. It's now a beginning of good works. The balance to the gospel of grace 
is that we are saved by grace, not of works, but for good works. There is no Christian doctrine that will not uphold consecration. And most of the time, we have corporate idea of consecration, which is the gen generic, generic one, which is a response to a revelation of all these spiritual things that God has given to us. And then, at the same time, there are individualistic um, consecrations that the Lord might demand from us. When you see a sister say, God said I shouldn't wear trousers, she's not wrong. It's just that it's not generic. God might really be telling her not to wear it, but it will now be wrong if she tries to force it on all of us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me give a biblical example to make it make sense. For example, God said, Samson, I don't want you to cut your hair, and I don't want you to drink wine. He didn't say Israel. He said Samson. That was an individualistic consecration demand. Does that make any sense? All right, so one of the things that is a response, this one is not personal or not personal, maybe based on my calling because I'm a pastor or because I'm an apostle or an archbishop or just a brother in church. No, this one is for everybody. We all must pray because God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. One of the reasons why there is no so much signs and wonders in the body of Christ is because um, um, we are trying to channel, um, can I speak freely? Can I? Okay. Because we are trying to channel what actually is um, from the church to be for the church. How do I mean? In the mind of God actually, God is not expecting that we should be sick. Listen, it's a light to understand that you will be healed. It's a greater light to understand that you shouldn't be sick in the first place. And the realization of this changes everything. What you experience, what you are exposed to, determines reality. I think I was talking with Brogwinjo today. I said, I'm very concerned about people that speak French. And the reason is because I don't know any French preacher, so I don't know what they are hearing. And yes, I should be concerned because it's my father's business, amen. I said, I don't know any French preacher. And I don't know what they're hearing. I'm concerned. What if they're telling them rubbish? Now, I don't know any French preacher. Really, I can't even point out one because I don't speak French. It's as though my limitation has limited reality. Because they really are French preachers. Do you know it's possible to limit God? Oh, Psalm 78 verse 41. Can we display that? Psalm 78, verse 41. It's very possible to limit God. Praise God. Are we making progress? Are we getting blessed? All right. It says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Many people don't understand this. The will of God is not compulsory. It's just a smart choice. If the will of God will always be done, then the word obedience doesn't make any sense. If God is asking you to obey, it means you have a choice to do or not do. Do you know that in this place, if God says yes and a man says no, the answer is no. Huh. Yes, that's serious. Think about it. If God says to me to sit down and I refuse to sit down, what will happen? I'll continue standing and talking. Am I correct? But the will of God was that I should sit. Let me show you from scriptures. Acts chapter 13, verse 2. Acts chapter 13. Hey, I'm digressing for what I want. God, we are, but we are making progress, Abby. Yeah. That's the most important thing. We shall be blessed. <laughs> Acts chapter 13, verse 2. It says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate unto me Barnabas and Saul, for the work of the ministry wherefore I have called them unto. All right? Let's go to... Acts chapter 15, verse 30, because of time, let's do 38. Acts chapter 15, verse 38. Acts chapter 15, verse 38. But, okay, so now this is the background of the story. Paul and Barnabas, Paul or Saul, Paul is Roman, but Saul is the Hebrew, right? Holy Spirit didn't change the name. Anyways, so <laughs> Paul and Barnabas, Paul was actually being mentored by Barnabas. He was, you know, Barnabas was the one that accepted him into 
into the faith and all that. And they started this missionary walk. So they took this other guy called John Mark with them. And this time they went and got into trouble, you know, normal persecution, the glory of the, of the church. And um, John Mark ran away when he saw sufferings. And there were so many people. Paul talked about one other brother called Demas. He said, I haven't loved this present work. Lord, forsook me for the pleasure of So there were people like that, that followed Paul, Alexander, Imphenos, many people that the Bible tells us. At the, the, in the heat of, them, of um, persecution, they ran away. And so was this young man called John Mark. So just trying to paint a picture. So John Mark ran away and then God delivered them. Then they got home and they wanted to go for another missionary journey. Then Barnabas is like, hi, Paul. It's time for another missionary journey. Let's go. So John is like, oh, Paul is like, yeah, yeah, let me carry my bag. So he picks his bag and goes outside and he sees John Mark. He's like, eh? This traitor. <laughs> no, this guy is not coming with us. And so that's the background. So Paul thought it not good to take him, which is John Mark, who departed from them from Pamphylia. Hmm, amen. And went not with them to the work. So you get the story now. I just summarized the chapter. Verse 39. And the contention was so sharp between them, and they departed. So this is what I'm trying to say. They departed asunder one from the other, and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed, and then Paul took Silas, all right? So now, what's the connection of what am I trying to say? In Acts chapter 13, verse 2, the Holy Spirit said, Separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work of the ministry that I have called them unto. In Acts chapter 15, verse 39 and 40, we saw that what the Holy Spirit said will work did not work because two people disagreed with the Holy Spirit, even though they were men of God. So because God said doesn't mean that it will happen. That's the point I'm trying to make. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the point I want you to see, that truly you can hear God. God said this. And by not agreeing, I hope you're aware that Egypt is not that far from Canaan. The journey to the promised land was a journey back home. Canaan was their former house. And we did not see Abraham sailing through, um, passing through any Red Sea. He literally passed Philistine and got there. God took them through the longer route because of their stiff neck, stiff neckness or whatever it's called. They were stubborn people. The Bible says God knew that if they saw the Philistines, they would run back. So God, listen, this is so powerful that God wanted to take people on a 40 days journey and they limited God to 40 years. That God literally said 40 days is good. And men made 40 days, 40 years. Is that serious? He says, you have limited me the only one. And tempted tempted the only one of Israel. So first of all, we have to understand that prophecies can be literally overing around your life. And some of you, listen, I've come to realize that the most frustrated Christians are Christians that have heard so many things about themselves. They are the ones that are the most frustrated. They've prophesied over them, but they can't see these realities. Because what God speaks are possibilities, especially when it's in your life. In creation, that's absolute. But in your life, you have a will, and you must align. And so what God, the word of God is a pathway. The word of God, I hope we know, the word of God is absolute in the believer's life, not absolute generally. Even, praise God. What the word of God reveals to us is possibility. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you will be saved. So salvation is possible in the name of Jesus. Will you do it? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. What the word shows us, it literally are possibilities. Then we now have to plug into those possibilities and make the possibilities reality. Praise the Lord. Now, why is this so important? Because it will be a waste of time to erect an altar of prayer without an altar of knowledge. Because in the real sense, you pray to know. That's why you're praying. I know 
we, when we hear prayer, the first thing that comes to our mind is God, give me, give me, give me, give me. But listen, God has given all things that pertain to life and godliness. I don't think I should say that. I think I should show, show that. Second Peter chapter 1. If it's not there, sorry. It's not part of my message. Amen. Yeah, I've, even, I've gone from... Yes. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Let's see that. It says, according as his divine power has he given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of, another translation says, according to the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. Listen, let me say it again so it can make sense. He has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness according to the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. So all things that pertain unto life and godliness is in accordance with the knowledge of Jesus. So no knowledge of Jesus, you might be lacking all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Let me show you how Paul prayed. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. The primary reason for prayer is for your edification. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, Mm, let's, start from, let's start from 15, just to make what I want to say clear. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. That's so powerful. Mm. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in prayer. Now, what is the nature of this prayer? Oh, I pray the church of Jesus Christ will come to this. The nature of Paul's prayer. Paul is telling you, listen, this is what I pray. He was telling us about a brother. Epaphras, um, Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. It says, Epaphras, a bold servant of Jesus Christ, um, always laboring for you fervently in prayer that you may be established in all the will of God. Paul made us understand that the nature of the New Testament believer's prayer was intercessory. This prayer is showing his prayer life. We read Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. Ever since the day I heard of your faith, I do not cease to pray for you that you may be filled with all the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He was praying for the church. He didn't say, that's what I'm praying for me. He says, you see, he said, Epaphras, a born servant, always praying. That means anytime you caught Epaphras praying, he was praying for the church in Colossae. That's why you can find Paul, Paul saying, Things that are grammatically wrong, but spiritually correct. He said, having nothing but possessing all. Think about that. Having nothing but possessing all. That's something serious. He said, I don't have anything, but I have everything. He says, I've learned to abase. In plenty, in little, I'm always okay. James looked at the church. He said, if any be sick among you, let him come and show himself to the elders. He says, we are here for you. Oh, praise God. That's the life. I hope you know that when you're reading the synoptic gospels, you are not the woman with the issue of blood. This is what every Christian must get. You are not the person that came to Jesus for a miracle. No. You are the actor, the Jesus. As he is, so are you in this world. You are the one dispensing the miracle. That's why you are his ambassador. So you are not the needy one. You are the giving one. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, let's go back to verse 16. Are we getting what I'm saying? Praise God. Cease not to give thanks and make mention of you in my prayer. So what is he praying? That, so Paul is saying, see, when I'm praying, I'm praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. That word wisdom is a place. Wisdom is not just quoting something you read on Google. Ha. The word is a combination of two words, wise domain. It's a place. It says, and the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 30, that Christ has been made unto us wisdom. Sophia. It refers to a territory. It says that it may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. And revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18. Oh. oh. 
Let me let that slide. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that what? That ye may know. So Paul is saying, I'm praying that you know. So the idea of prayer is what? For the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened, to know. So what is the Christian lacking? Knowledge. That's all you need. That's all that's missing, if it's missing. Knowledge. The eyes of the understanding. I hope you know that you don't grow the power of God. You grow in the knowledge of the power of God. The power of God is the Holy Ghost. I don't have more Holy Ghost than anybody. And nobody has more Holy Ghost than me. The exposure to the realities of his person is what makes the difference. The more you exercise and see the possibilities, the assurance, there is a, there is a place where faith becomes experience. <laughs> Praise the Lord. See, somebody might be telling you all the theological things. If something has worked for you, no matter what you say, you'll just be shaking your head. I know what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think this one is grammar. I know what I'm saying. Because you have experienced it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It will be very difficult for somebody to convince me that prayer doesn't work. It's not like it will be very difficult. You can't. I've heard you. I me, mean, I know what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. So what the believer needs is the knowledge of him. And that's why we're praying. So as we're praying tonight, it's true you have needs, but you have a need. It is, if you meet, if this need is met, every other need is okay. Christ really has been made unto you wisdom. Ah. That means we have to tap into that reality. Did you notice that when God wanted to make helper for Eve, for Adam, he didn't make Eve and send her from heaven. What did he make Eve from? From his inside. All that you need is already inside you. Everything that you need, God put in you when he made you. So the connection is revelation. Revelation. I just need to see. If Jesus has done it all, then all I have to do is find out. And when I find out, I insist. There is something that many people don't understand. When you see the revelation, then you now experience it. Did you notice? In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Do we want to put that up? Jesus in Caesarea Philippi. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Who do men say that I am? Then they said, some say you are John the Baptist. Others say you are Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Jesus says, who do you say that I am? Then the Bible says, Simon Barjona said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Look at what happened in Matthew 17. Matthew 17. Matthew chapter 17. Let's start from verse 1. Matthew 17 from verse 1. Hope we are not reading, opening too many scriptures. It's very good for your health, though. <laughs> very, very good. Matthew 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a mountain far apart, or set apart, another translation says, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment as white as light. Listen. So in verse 16, there was a corporate revelation by utterance that Peter gave. Abi, in chapter 17, now they experience their revelation. Oh, do you understand what I'm saying? They first had the revelation, then they now experience the revelation. So in 17, Jesus now really showed them that truly I'm the son of God. Because the Bible says that a voice from heaven spoke out saying, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. This means that if you want to see it, you have to hear it. You will first have the revelation, then the experience will follow after. So all I need to do really is find out. Praise God. Do we understand what I'm saying? Find out. Listen, we don't have many problems. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. I, this mountain, bring it down. Did you notice what we... Jesus... In, Let's check that. 
Matthew 21. Matthew chapter 21. 19. Matthew 21, verse 19. I don't want to talk about this too much because I know Brother Benjo has studied everything fits. First, I start criticizing my message. Matthew 21, verse 19. And he went, and when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came, okay, maybe we shouldn't read that part. Let's look at 21, 21. Let's just, because of time, so we can pray. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall say not only to, to this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. Let me say this. It appears as though Jesus is saying, don't address your faith towards God. Hear me very well. Jesus is saying that faith is not towards God. There is already a provision by grace. We pray for direction and knowledge for this provision. And then what do we do by faith? We receive and enact. Jesus said, if you say to the mountain, so in faith, you are addressing issues. You are not praying about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? What you are praying about is to see what to say. Jesus is saying to address the issue. That's the same thing that David did. David didn't tell Goliath, hey, he didn't tell God, God, come and see Goliath is too big, me this small boy, come and fight for me. No. David chose to tell Goliath about God. He addressed Goliath. If you shall say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it shall be done for you. So faith is not to get something from God. We have already gotten the person that God wants for us. Listen, the answer to every question on the earth that God has given us an answer, who can try? Is this Holy Spirit? Have, you didn't notice that that's the one thing that Jesus gave us. He said it is expedient. That means very important that I leave for him to come. What is the answer to sin? Regeneration. How are we regenerated? By the Spirit. What is the answer to death and coming back to life? That last day, in the twinkling of an eye with the blast of a trumpet, how will we be resurrected? By the Holy Spirit. Who gives us wisdom? So God's answer to every need is spirit. So what you now need to do is to, you need to seek. Now, the word seek is different from search. Seek means to make inquiry. Did we get what I just said? The word seek means to make inquiry. So now all we have to do is seek what we have received. This is what will now make the life of Jesus begin to flow. So that I will not be speaking too many grammar. The reason why you were not healed is because you didn't have enough faith. But maybe you prayed. You laid your hands now. Do you think that the people that received the miracle from Jesus in the synoptic gospel had faith? The only faith that they had was that they came. And that's very important. Because Jesus never went and knocked at the door. Is there anybody sick here? He never did that. He, he needed you to come. At least know that I'm able. The problem with many Christians is not the capacity of God. They know that God can heal, but they don't know if he's willing. Will God heal now? And so, how am I rooted in faith? I want you to do a very good Bible study. You realize that in the epistles, faith is never alone. It's always with the word love. Listen, when you understand God's love, walking in faith is easy. Jesus never did any miracle to show that he was powerful. Please pay attention. Miracles were done as earthly tokens for spiritual realities. That's true. 
So in the Synoptic Gospels, Jesus will heal the blind, and he was the first two because he told us in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, that he has come to open the blind eyes. That opening of the blind eyes is not just naked, you know, he's talking about inside, foresight, and oversight, spiritual eyes. Jesus was the first to heal somebody that was deaf because the Bible or the, the Jewish culture believed that it was, it was a demon that made people deaf. And you had to cast out the demon by the name. You will notice that when Jesus wanted to cast out legion, he said, what is your name? That's the, that's the order. Then he said, I'm legion. He says, for we are many. Then Jesus casted out legion by his name. So now the person is deaf and dumb. How do you cast it out? It was left for the Messiah. It, in theology, it's called messianic sign. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead for this. After the Bible, he was not the first to raise people from the dead. There are 11 raising of the dead miracles. But to raise somebody from the dead four days after was out of the tradition. Because they believed that after three days, it was impossible to, to raise the dead anymore. Now Jesus is coming in and telling them, listen, you people believe that there is a resurrection on the last day. And I'm going to show you that I'm the one that will call for the resurrection of the dead. He said, Lazarus, comfort. The miracle is that, listen, a dead man heard voice and literally stood up and came and nobody assisted him. Do you understand what I'm saying? That was an earthly token to make you know that on that last day, if your body should decay, at the blast of the trumpet, you're going to rise up. Because that voice that raised Lazarus from the dead is the same voice that is going to call for all of us. Hallelujah. So the miracles of Jesus were earthly tokens for spiritual realities, yes. But it was not necessary to show the power of God because the Bible says where, everywhere he went, he was doing good. So Jesus healing people was because he didn't like their condition. It was an expression of compassion. You have to understand this. Do you believe that God is powerful in heaven? Amen. Amen. Do we believe that God is powerful in heaven? Yeah. Is God healing in heaven? So healing is not an expression of God's power. Oh, do you understand what I'm saying? If God is powerful in heaven and God is not healing in heaven, that means God has, there must be something more to God's power. So all this healing, listen, you have to see it from the basis of God's love. You have to. You have to look at somebody sick. What should be going on in your mind that will produce faith? Is the reality that God is too good to want somebody like this. You see, that conviction that God is too good to want somebody like this is what is called faith. When the conviction is strong, ah, Peter looked at Ania and said, brother, I was sick. The Bible says he had been sick for eight years. And amazingly, Peter happened to be passing the city. So Peter gets there. I think it's Acts chapter 8. Peter looked at the brother and said, Aeneas. Ah, he said, don't you know that Christ makes the well? Rise up and make your bed. No prayer. He said, you have been here for eight years because you lack knowledge. He said, don't you know that Christ makes the well? Rise up and make that bed. There was an assurance that these guys had. It was an assurance of the love of God. In Acts chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says Jesus showed himself with infallible, many infallible proofs. Expounding scriptures, showing them from typology to typology, realities about God's love. Ah, Paul did that study. He said, I'm fully persuaded. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Paul summarized his entire Bible study. He said, when I finished studying my Bible, I had a persuasion that God is loving. Ah. That's when Paul finished reading the Bible. He said, I'm now sure. Um, you know what do somebody says? I'm fully persuaded. We will quote it. For him, it was a confession. I hope we know what I mean by confession. Confession is not what we do. This confession I mean, no. I'm talking about confession, like profession. Eh? Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me explain. When you sin, amen. Go ahead, pause. When you sin, 
and you want to confess your sins, do you say what you will do or what you have done? Uh -huh. What we do today, what we call confession, we will write out 75 things. We will not start to say it so that we can become it. That's not confession. You must have seen it. It's not mechanical. Oh. Do you people understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. It's not a mechanical. I believe I'm the righteousness of God. I will never fail. I will never. That's not the way it works. You will see it in the Bible that I can't fail. When you see it, the confession will come out. Ah, I can't fail. That one, ah, nobody can take it away from me. That's a confession. That's what happened to Paul. He said, I'm fully persuaded. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. There is another person that said it in the Bible. His name is David. He said, surely, certainly, I'm sure that what is following me is God's goodness and mercy. Many Christians today still think witches are following them. And somebody in the Old Testament was convinced enough that what is following me is goodness and mercy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Oh. These things are hearing of me among many witnesses. Let me, let, me, let me show us something. And then we'll pray. Obviously, we already know what to pray about. Am I, Abby? Yes. That the eyes of our understanding is enlightened. I heard Papa Egan say this some seven years ago. And he said... When you start to pray the Pauline prayers, you're going to start to get scared of yourself. I didn't understand. But he was absolutely correct. You get absolutely sensitive. And you enter. Nobody taught me that wisdom was a place. I realized it. That, ah, this thing is true. Including peace. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. If you see someone that is restless, he doesn't know God. He said grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. So Jesus is literally sleeping and there is storm. He wakes up from rest to cause rest. Ah. Grace. So everything boils down to knowledge. Knowledge. Those that know they are God, what would happen to them? They would be strong. It's not, oh Lord, make me strong. It's not a prayer point. Right. I decree, I'm strong, I'm strong in the name of Jesus. I'm strong. Hey, yada, he, you know. No. The Bible says that's not how it works. Those that know they are God shall be strong and do exploit. Lord, help me to do exploit. No, go and know. <laughs> Yeah, there are so many things we pray about that we don't need to. The Bible has already told us clearly, this is the response to this. These things are systems. How do you think God is in rest? Because he has put everything in a system form. Oh. Think about it. If God was signing petition of prayer every year, you pray. Ah, give him. Don't give him. Don't give her. She's a fool. That guy, help him, help him. He has been praying. He has been praying. That would be a miserable God. So what did God do? He put systems in place. This will respond. Please, eh? Maybe I only goose field. You have carry, you have carry Holy Spirit. Go and jump down from seven story building. I believe I can fly into hell. <laughs> You're gonna die. That's a system. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if there is any need, one issue that we have is knowledge. knowledge. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know. So we pick those Pauline prayers. You can't get it wrong. You can't get it wrong. With those Pauline prayers, you cannot get it wrong. The eyes of my understanding is enlightened. Look at the context in Luke 11. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and you shall he said, if you, you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, God, when you ask for the gift of the Spirit. So God didn't say just ask. He didn't say just ask for anything. That's a baby mentality. God is not a Ponzi scheme. Let me give you a real life example. I heard a message from the same Papa again. <laughs> he said, if you believe, just say it. It will happen. 
So I went into a car lot. <laughs> Amen. I went into a car lot and I saw a BMW. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I put my hand on it. I said, nobody will buy you until I'm ready. Even till today, I'm not still ready. But <laughs> So I put my hand on it and I left. Two weeks later, I realized the car wasn't there anymore. <laughs> so I wanted to understand what was going on. I entered the place. I said, good afternoon. They greeted me well. I said, okay. I said, sorry, there's a beer. I said, ah, we sold it like eight days ago. I said, eh? I realized that my theology was wrong. Many people are frustrated and disappointed in God because God never had an appointment with them. They assumed realities. Listen, the Bible didn't just say to ask with his name. The Bible actually said to ask in his name. You have to ask with something consistent with what he wants. You can't just say, in the name of Jesus, I decree that I'm having a car tomorrow. That's not the way faith works. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. This thing is glare. <laughs> Romans 10, verse 17. Praise Jesus. Romans 10, verse 17. Are we getting blessed? It says, so then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You cannot have faith for something that God did not promise you. Hey, amen. That's so liberating. Did you hear what I just said? You cannot have faith for what God did not promise you. Abraham had faith for Isaac when God said, I will give you Isaac. You cannot release your faith until God has spoken a word. So if you release your faith without the word of God or the promise of God, that's a wish. That's self You are wishing. You are not, that's not faith. I believe that tomorrow I'm going to be the president of America. Call. Even your community, you won't be. <laughs> class. Maybe you'll be a hair. Maybe a class, Sunday school teacher. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith committed by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's so dynamic. It also means that the first or the original state of faith is speaking. Because you can't hear what was not said. And so, if I'm in faith, then I'm saying something. I'm saying what I heard God say. Listen, friends. If you want to hear God, read your Bible out loud. Read your Bible out loud. That's the voice of God. That book there is what God is saying, what God will say, and what God has said, everything. Can we display message translation? Is that possible? Let me show us something in Isaiah. And then we can pray. Abby, we should pray. So we're not just... Praise God. I love the word. Can be here till tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Let's just be enjoying God. Abby? Yes. Isaiah chapter 8, sorry. Isaiah chapter 8. I was trying to, to look for it. And we can't display message, Abby. Okay, okay, perfect. I'll read. We have message translation, Abby. It's kind of literal, and it's safe. This, this particular verse, message translation, is safe. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys, go with your post. As it's verse 19, you know, 19 to 20, I want to show you what Isaiah said. Now, who is Isaiah in the Bible? He's a prophet. See, even if you doubt your name, don't doubt Isaiah's calling. He is really a prophet. <laughs> Praise God. He is. So let's see what he said. He said, when people tell you, try out fortune tellers, consult the spiritualist. Why not tap into the spirit world? Get in touch with the dead. Tell them no. We are going to study the scriptures. I like it. Isaiah said, the peak of spirituality 
is the study of the scriptures. Listen, this can literally change everything about your prayer life. You see it in the scriptures, you press into the possibility. You see, if, if it is documented, if it is written, then God really... Listen, he wrote it so that it will not change. And so it is true. It is yea, it is amen in Christ Jesus. You take that word and begin to press into those possibilities. And it's not just in corporate. You can't build your prayer life in a prayer meeting. You bring your prayer life to a prayer meeting. What we ought to be doing now is to be edifying ourselves. Paul said, how come when we come to church, somebody has Sam, somebody has him. Listen, the Corinthian church problem was too much demonstration. The church today's problem is no demonstration. <laughs> so lukewarm. We just want to come and watch Pastor Bond. That's not the Christian faith. Everybody has something they supply to the service. Even your disposition is important. The way you sit down can affect the meeting. It's true. <laughs> Holy Spirit, there is spirit of joy. And your face is like this. Why are you doing some of my faces? I don't know your faces. <laughs> Praise God. So I want us to pray. Let's pray that Colossians 1 verse 9. Ever since the day we heard of edits, which is faith from verse 4, we do not cease to pray for you that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So we are pressing into the reality. I'm filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I don't make stupid decisions. I'm free from costly mistakes. It is a calamity for you to, to, to have undecided consequences. Something will happen and you will not know the outcome. It's an error for a Christian. I decree over my life that I am filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We are going to pray it in two folds. You are going to pray for yourself and then you are going to pray the nature and intercede for the local assembly, your local assembly. that I'm filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom in every area of my life I'm filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom that wisdom there means how I know what to do I know when to do it I know how to do it I know when to talk I know when not to talk in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I have spiritual understanding. I see things from the perspective of God. I have insight into things. I have foresight of things. I have an oversight of things. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Because I have a sound mind. I see through the lens of Jesus Christ. I see how Jesus sees. I see how God sees. So I conform, I speak like God. I'm filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost on my inside. Now let's now make it an intercession. Pray for your local assembly that we are filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. All wisdom. The Bible says, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. The word of God is prevailing in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. This local assembly is influencing everything pertaining to Houston. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The word of God is prevailing. The word of God is prevailing. The gospel is covering Houston as the waters covers the seas. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost were filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding let's pray for ourselves that the eyes of understanding is enlightened that we may know the hope of this calling and the glory of his riches the glorious riches of his inheritance in the saints the eyes of our understanding is enlightened that we may know that we may know we may see ourselves we see us as he sees us in him If there's anybody feeling heavy as we're, as we're praying right now, God is replacing that heaviness with joy. The eyes of my understanding is enlightened. I begin to see scriptures clearly. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to pray this prayer. I think I was still talking with Prabhupada about this. The greatest tragedy that can happen to a human being is to succeed at what is not God's will. It's, it's the biggest tragedy that can happen to you to be successfully a failure. We're going to pray. The Bible says there is a path that seemeth right. The word seems right means by calculation is correct. Seems. You will argue. They'll say this thing is wrong. You say no. Ah, ah. There is a path that seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. Ah, we're going to pray and lift our voices. Lord, everything that, com- that concerns me is submitted to your will. If there is anything that needs to be uprooted, anything that needs to be changed, any mentality that I have that is not consistent with your will and your word, hey. This also, also mentality, no rest, money, money. Comparing yourself. Anything that is inconsistent with the nature of Jesus Christ, with the nature of the spirit that I've received. Any sin, anything, Lord Jesus. <laughs> yes. Is uprooted by the power of the Holy Ghost and I'm conforming. I'm conforming. My mind is transformed. My, right, my mind is renewed by the word of God. Paul said, though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed daily. My inward man is renewed. I'm changing by the word. Transforming as I behold the word. I'm changing by the word. I'm changing by the word. The word of God is changing me. The word of God is washing me. Jesus said, ye are cleansed by the words that I speak unto you. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. I'm changing by the word. I'm transformed by the word. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I don't even lead prayers like this, but I'm led to lead this prayer. Praise the Lord. I just saw the story of John 2, and I'm led to lead the prayer. Amen. Amen. I don't know who this is for. God is going to open our eyes to see people that he has placed in our lives. We will see the value of people that he has placed in our lives. Some people, a prophet will visit you. Because he disguised as your friend, you will play FIFA and he will go without a word. Hmm. A prophet will literally visit you because you just eat and have dinner. No utterance. Because the, the person came as a friend. We are robbing ourselves of reality. In John chapter 2, Jesus got to a wedding. 
and there was no wine. Can you imagine? The bride and the groom didn't even know that wine has finished. Mary carried their problem on her head. Ah, we're going to pray. People that would love me and carry my matter on their head. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? People that would love me, that would watch out for me, that would that will want to push me to my greatness, that will want to push me to knowing Jesus better, that will want to push me onto righteousness. The Lord will open my eyes to value those relationships. I don't know, this definitely is for somebody. God will push me to value those relationships. God will push me to, va to value those relationships. I will begin to see the importance of those relationships. And the friends that will lead me astray, the associations that will lead me astray, God will open my eyes to see that this is not for me. People that will provoke me onto good works, that will challenge me to pray, that will challenge me to fast, that will challenge me to study, that will challenge me to evangelize, to do the work of God. I begin to see value in those friendships. So as that friend is going, you say, no, let's pray. Don't just go. Let's pray. We've talked, but let's pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.